All right, good afternoon. Uh, I've got 1230. We're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Dave Nadler, <clears throat> the Warning Coordination Meteorologist with the National Weather Service here in Peachtree City, Atlanta. And this is our first uh, special weather briefing on Hurricane Ian. So let's go ahead and get started. So this is the latest, uh, as of 11 o'clock this morning, uh, Hurricane Center uh, track forecast, and I'll get into some of the details of the of the hurricane here in just a second. But um, basically, Ian is now a hurricane. Um, it's forecasted uh, to uh, track north northwest over the next 24 to 36 hours, and <clears throat> and intensify, especially as it gets uh, across the western tip of Cuba uh, over the next 24 hours. Um, one of the things I definitely wanted to point out, and you're going to probably hear me say this a few times throughout this. Um, presentation is the the uncertainty of the track, especially beyond the 48 to 72 hour window, which is like Wednesday, Thursday this week, um, is really important to just remember because you know the impacts that we could potentially see in across North and Central Georgia are obviously really going to be dependent on you know the track of of Ian. So um, slight shift at west east. Um, don't get too caught up into it, you know, from every three hours or so, but definitely over the 12 to 24 hour period, if we start to see trends east or west, um, then we can really start to, to key in on the potential impacts for the area. So one other thing I, I do want to point out is don't focus on the center line track because, again, the deviation um, of that of the track over over the course of the next few days, not to mention the impacts that could be felt uh, well away from the center and even beyond the forecast cone um, are definitely uh, there. So um, <clears throat> just keep all these little little points in, in mind as we as we move forward with these with these briefings. Okay, so latest uh, on Ian. Here's satellite. Um, really nice circulation. You can see this is an infrared satellite. So the the darker oranges and and blacks and even whites that you see around the center of the circulation um, really uh, give us uh, sort of a heads up that the uh, storm is starting to organize or be continuing to organize and become better organized. And this is what's expected to happen um, over the course of the next uh, one to two days as it tracks uh, north northwest toward Cuba. Uh, basically, it's uh, as of 11 a.m. It's about 100 miles west of Grand Cayman, 240 miles southeast of the western tip of Cuba, and about 1,000 miles south of Georgia. So we still have... Um, Still quite a ways away from our state, um, but again, very important for us to start talking about, you know, what this storm is going to do and how that might translate to impacts across the, the forecast area. Minimum central pressure, 980 millibars, down about 9 millibars over the last 12 hours, which is an indication of strengthening. Maximum winds are at 80 miles per hour. It's a Category 1. Um, that is up 5 miles per hour since the 5 a.m. update. And the movement is to the northwest at 13 miles per hour, which is about the same um, over the last three to six hours, really hasn't been much deviation in the in the latest uh, movement of Ian. <clears throat> okay, so scenarios. This is what everybody really wants to see, and of course, is, this is where the greatest uncertainty exists <laughs> at this point. As I mentioned earlier, beyond that 48 to 72 hour window um, from where we are now, the forecast uh, definitely um, can deviate, and there's a lot of uncertainty still. So. This is just looking at what we call an ensemble of model output. Basically, all the little dots that you see are the potential centers of Ian um, sometime midday or early afternoon on Friday. Um, so again, um, over the next 24 to 36 hours, the models are in pretty good consensus of where Ian's going to go. But then beyond that, you can see um, the deviation of the potential centers of, of Ian anywhere from somewhere over the central or eastern Gulf of Mexico all the way up towards the South Carolina coast. So <clears throat> obviously we're looking at where the uh, concentration of these uh, potential uh, centers exist over the next four to five days. Um, but the bottom line with, with this graphic is we want to kind of show you that if, if Ian takes more of a leftward uh, track, you know, towards like uh, Panama City area, that green line that you see, then the potential impacts across north and central Georgia could be more significant than if it took more of an easterly track into uh, west central Florida to the northeast across the, the, the central part of the state of Florida. <clears throat> Excuse me, if that were to happen, 
then the impacts across North and Central Georgia wouldn't be nothing, but they would definitely be uh, lesser than what we would see if it takes more of a westerly uh, track where much of our area would be on the eastern side of the center. So um, it remains to be seen exactly what's going to happen as it approaches the Florida coast over the next few days. Uh, but wanted to kind of draw it out that, you know, bottom line, <clears throat> we need to start preparing now uh, for, you know, a variety of impacts I'll get into here in just a second. But as far as the finer scale details on magnitude of winds and how much rain and that sort of thing, those are things that are still uh, rather uncertain, of course, dependent on where the track of Ian goes. So, and the distance between that green line and the blue line you see on the graphic is only 100 miles. So, it really, that, that 100 mile distance could really result in significant differences in what we could see uh, for North and Central Georgia by the end of the week. So, um, keep this in mind. We'll continue to obviously update and fine tune this information as we move forward. But this is kind of where we're at right now here Monday afternoon. Okay, storm intensity. It is, Ian is definitely expected to uh, rapidly intensify over the next couple of days. Um, what you're seeing there on the left and the right is the hurricane models or forecast models that show um, basically how the pressure is going to increase and the, the winds are going to increase into a category three, category four potential storm uh, by late tomorrow into early Wednesday. Um, one thing that I wanted to point out with this is that as the storm approaches land, there is a, a pretty in indicative like signal that the storm could weaken. Um, and you're seeing that on both of these graphics. However, the last couple of like significant major hurricanes that we've seen approach like Hurricane Michael back in 2018, for instance, um, the models have a very difficult time identifying rapid intensification just off the coast or offshore. Um, the natural thing to see is that yes, tropical systems definitely weaken as they move onshore, but just offshore, if they slow down, there still could be, even if half of the system is onshore, if the center of the circulation is still just off the coast, there still could be this continued intensification and strengthening that happens that the models have a hard time resolving and seeing. So I just wanted to, I'm showing you this graphic basically to show you that, you know, the intensification that's expected over the next couple of days as it approaches somewhere from Florida all the way to like um, Alabama, parts of Mississippi and Georgia. Um, but don't, don't lose sight of the fact that there could still be continued strengthening just off offshore, off the coast as Ian is, is approaching and, and about to make landfall. And these graphics are not really uh, identifying that just at the moment. So um, anyway, just wanted to, you know, get, make sure everybody's sort of aware that some of these models showing the weakening occurring as it makes landfall or just before it makes landfall doesn't always, you know, happen. And we've certainly seen that um, with several systems over the past few years. Okay, potential impacts, just looking at wind probabilities, and I'm gonna try to explain this uh, in as simple terms as possible, but this is something the National Hurricane Center puts out and they update it every time they do their updates, every three hours, every six hours, really every six hours they go into adjusting these probabilities based on, um, where the center of the circulation is and where, what the track and, and forecast is going to be. So this was taken from earlier this morning. Um, these are um, what we call a, a cumulative probability over a five-day period. So from Monday morning, basically through Saturday morning, what is the chance that we'll see tropical storm force winds greater than 40 miles per hour um, on this map? And so if you take an example like A, um, I've just put it over the panhandle of Florida. Doesn't I'm not referencing any specific city, but just for example, what you what we would look at is it would have city A would have a six percent probability on Wednesday, a fourteen percent on Thursday, and a ten percent chance on Friday to see tropical storm force winds. But so the way the graphic is created, it's basically taking those three percentages and adding them together to come up with a cumulative um, probability of seeing tropical storm force winds. And that 30% is basically what you see there in the yellow. If you're in the yellow shaded area at this time, that's how it's kind of how it all kind of comes together. So given that, um, it's still it's too early to determine how strong the winds are going to be 
across North and Central Georgia at its peak. Um, but there is something to note, and we saw this kind of similar to Irma, where we had a really tight, what we call pressure gradient, uh, with a strong high pressure system over the Northeast states. And then of course the uh, approaching tropical system that creates a real tight pressure gradient, which results in um, you know pretty strong gusty winds over a long duration of time. So um, basically what we can tell you now is that we do anticipate this gradient to develop and tighten up, especially as we head through tomorrow into Wednesday and, and definitely by Thursday. So even before the rain ever gets here or anything else gets here, the wind is gonna start to pick up and that um, duration of stronger winds across any part of our area um, is really going to be could be a, a, a primary concern as we head towards the middle to end of this week and certainly into the weekend so um, keep that in mind and then I wanted to kind of zoom in and show you this graphic and then point out a couple of different locations across north and central Georgia I threw Savannah in there too just to show you the cumulative probability of seeing tropical storm force winds basically as of earlier this morning. Now this graphic and this forecast is obviously gonna change uh, later today and into tomorrow, but this is what we're kind of seeing right now. So if you're up in far North Georgia, Dade County, for instance, is about, there's less than 10% chance at this point of seeing tropical storm force winds through Saturday morning. If you're in Atlanta, it's about 20%, Athens about the same, Columbus closer to 30% and then Macon, a little bit over 30% and Savannah has a little bit over a 40% chance of seeing tropical storm force winds uh, through Saturday morning. So again, this is going to change based off of the location of Ian and the forecast track, but this is what we're seeing right now. Uh, and you can kind of get an idea of, of what we're expecting as far as tropical storm force wind probabilities. <clears throat> this is the, this next graphic is the Probabilities, but what I've overlaid is the earliest reasonable time of arrival for these tropical storm force winds. And you can see, uh, again, this is through uh, this is a five-day period through Saturday morning. So for far north Georgia, if there were going to be tropical storm force winds, it would the earliest reasonable time of arrival would be late, th like Thursday afternoon into Thursday evening. Uh, for parts of Metro Atlanta, it'd be uh, Thursday morning. Athens, same thing. Thursday morning, Columbus late Wednesday night, Macon would be late Wednesday night, early Thursday morning, and you get the idea there. So that, <clears throat> again, these products are taken from the National Hurricane Center. I'm just trying to uh, add a little context to what is going on here. So there's, I'm not, I'm not showing the most likely time of arrival. I'm just showing you kind of the earliest reasonable time of arrival. So just to give you an idea uh, for preparedness uh, and planning purposes of when at this point we could see some of those stronger winds start to move in. Now this isn't taking into effect the 20 to 30 miles per hour winds that we could see. This is just tropical storm force winds, which would be basically 39 mile per hour winds or greater. Okay, moving into rainfall. Again, this is a snapshot forecast based on the current track uh, from earlier this morning of where the heaviest rainfall is expected as Ian you know, approaches and then moves in um, somewhere along the coast uh, of Florida late, uh, later in the week. So you could see um, parts of North, North Florida and even in the far Southeast Georgia, we can see um, at this, from this forecast, uh, anywhere from seven to 10 inches of rain. Um, but the main, I think the main takeaway from this is that if the shift in the forecast track is more to the West than that, that heaviest rain access could definitely move uh, west as well, uh, which can encompass parts of the state. Now, that said, three to five or six inches of rain out of the um, from what the latest forecast is um, could still pose some problems, uh, especially if we see a lot of that rainfall over a short period of time. So, again, it's it's too it's a little early to get into the details of how much and when, but this is the latest forecast uh, of rainfall, and a lot of this is expected to occur. Uh, over that Thursday, Friday, Saturday uh, time frame across uh, across much of the state, especially in north and central Georgia. So this graphic just shows um, basically kind of a matrix um, from Tuesday through Saturday of where where and when, or basically what and when we're expecting as far as potential threats and risk. Um, the wind threat is probably the first thing we have to you know be concerned about, and then of course the rainfall. Um, comes in after that. And then if any threat of tornadoes is going to exist, it's really going to be dependent on whether or not 
uh, we are east of the center. If, we, if, the, if the track of Ian uh, goes to the west of north and central Georgia and we're on the east side of the low, um, then the threat for tornadoes is going to be a little bit uh, higher than if, the, if we stay on the west side of the center. So something to keep in mind there. And then, of course, flooding threat, again, is going to be dependent on how much rain we see. The river flood potential is going to be dependent on, again, the rainfall and the timing of everything. But we've kind of added an elevated uh, risk of that as we head into Friday and especially on Saturday um, based on the uh, latest forecast that we're seeing with Ian. All right, so that is what we have at this point. Again, this is the first briefing that we've done that we're doing for Ian. We wanted to make sure everybody was kind of on the same page of the latest forecast from the National Hurricane Center, the possible scenarios, the uncertainty that's still out there, um, but definitely some of the impacts that we could start seeing um, as we head through the week and into the end of the end of the week and this weekend. Um, but again. The, the, there isn't a lot of uncertainty beyond that 48 to 72 hour window, Wednesday, Thursday timeframe. Um, but based on the latest forecast, um, just a good portion of the state and a good portion of North and Central Georgia need to start kind of raising some awareness of what we could potentially see as we head through the rest of the week, the middle to end of this week and into this weekend. Um, so with that, Again, this is being recorded, so we'll be able to share this with everybody um, that couldn't quite make the webinar this uh, this afternoon. But we are going to, so we'll send an email update later this afternoon for everybody. But we are scheduled, we do have scheduled another one of these webinars and briefings tomorrow afternoon, same time at 1230. And, um, you know, hopefully we'll have a, a little bit more information and we'll be able to find fine scale, fine tune the details just a little bit more. Um, from what we're seeing today. But uh, with that, I'm going to go ahead and just stop the recording. And if anybody has 